how you doing? Thank you for uh, having uh, one last little uh, hour and 85 minutes with me. Uh, first of all, I, there's a few thank yous I'd like to do if it's okay. I'd like to, for me, I would first of all like to thank Tom Ashley, and I would like you all to thank Tom Ashley. This is a, a fabulous meeting, and you got access to a lot of ideas and had a great, spectacular dinner last night, and you're going to have a spectacular lunch here shortly. Please, let's all say thank you to Tom. He, he actually nursed me through all of this, made sure that I came up and had as what we considered valuable information to share with all of you. Let's thank Madam President Shalita Stewart. You know, they help with doing these meetings, fabulous. And please, if you ever wondered whether or not we were gonna be in good hands, did you just see the talk Steve gave? Can I tell you a funny story? You know, since we got a little time, I'm going to putz around up here. Um, the very first speech I ever gave was in Toledo, Ohio, to the Toledo NAFA with John Savage in the audience. And I stood at the podium, and I read my speech. Read it. I mean literally read it. And when I got done, I got this much applause. And in two minutes, the room was clear. Two minutes. John Savage walked up to me, and this is the first words I ever heard him say. He said, young man, don't you believe in what you do for a living? That's the first thing he ever said to me. I said, well, why? why would you ask me that? What are you talking about? And he said, well, you read your speech. And I said, yeah, I wanted to make sure I covered everything. I didn't want to miss anything. And he looks at me dead bang, and he says, well, Van, I didn't believe you. If you can't tell me from your heart what it is you do, you don't belong up there. Can you imagine? That's the kind of luck you need to have in your life. That's, just, you know, I, I compare my first speech to Steve's. It looks like uh, I'm illiterate. <laughs> you know, so you have nothing to worry about with our future when you have leadership like Steve. So let's give him another hand, okay? A <laughs> couple of other things that he talked about I thought you'd find kind of interesting. I hope you'll laugh at this. I'm 29 years in a row, top of the table. Please listen to me very carefully. I have never passed the written exam to be a life insurance agent. I flunked it three times, 68 the first time, 68 the second time, 68 the third time. But this happened to be in 1973. That was when I became licensed as an insurance agent. We didn't take our test on a computer. We did it on a piece of paper. And when I got done, the commissioner of insurance of the state of Wisconsin came up to me and said, Van, that's the third time you got a 68. You must be reading something into these questions that's not there. I'm going to ask you five oral questions, and if you get them right, I'm going to pass you. I must have got them right. <laughs> Do you, what I'm hoping you're hearing when you hear stories like Steve and mine, none of this is about having spectacular talent or amazing intelligence, or all kind. He had a gift of gab. I don't even have that. But if you take the time to learn, he's a marketing monster. That's another thing I wrote down. You're not going to believe this. I speak, this is probably my 3,000th 3, speech. I have 50 agents across this country who have all their investments, all their money with me. They watch me do this, and they come up and say, Van, will you take care of my stuff for me? They don't want to do it. I'm trying to get you to understand he gave you truth. If you're willing to put yourself out there and let people know what you do, there are so many opportunities for you to be able to take advantage of things. Now, you're going to laugh, but I feel I did a couple of things really very poorly yesterday. First thing, I want you to understand that everything I was trying to share with you yesterday was to first of all help you get tons of appointments. I have agents come to me all the time and they say, Van, I, I, I'm not going to go and sell life insurance until I'm so good at it that I can really teach people about life insurance. And then I stop and I say, well, well boy, that's amazing, but can I ask you a question? And they say, sure. I say, so you've made a decision that you'd like to be paid like a teacher for the rest of your life. 
We get paid the big bucks because we inspire people to take action, not teach them anything. It's not our job to teach. There's a phrase that says there is no teaching, there is only learning. I can't teach any of you anything unless you're willing to learn. Period. End of quote. So I don't worry about it anymore. I used to worry like crazy. I just stand up here and try to do the best I can and get as much information out there and say, hey, if you don't get it all written down, my daughter really critiqued me yesterday, said I didn't give you enough time to write down some of the lines and things. She really beat me up pretty good. That's why we give you the questions. By the way, do you know seven or eight of you already signed up in for the questions yesterday and got them already. So you can go to vanmiller.com, hit the about button, and then you glide down and it says, may I please have the 40 questions and we'll send them right to your email. I try to teach common sense sales presentations. This is what I mean. We've been taught to make pitches. Pitches don't work. Let me show you a quick sales presentation. You're going to laugh like crazy. I walk up to people all the time and I say, can I ask you something? Are taxes historically high or historically low right now? They're low, aren't they? So let me ask you something. Have you ever done the math? That's a question I didn't tell you. Write that down. It's how, if you're an analytical, you can go from being, you know, asking questions to saying, boy, would you like to see the math? Have you ever done the math? Wouldn't it be amazing to see the math? Do you understand? So I transition and then I say to them, have you ever done the math on, stop and think, does it make sense when the government, when Wall Street, when the banks are all telling you that you should take a tax deduction now on a small amount of money, on a small amount of money, when taxes are as low as they will ever be in your life so that you can transfer a whole pile of money to the future when taxes are assuredly going to be way higher. Does that make sense? Why do people do that? Wouldn't it make more sense if you were really interested in doing the best you could for yourself? Wouldn't it be smart to pay your taxes on a small amount of money right now when they're historically low? and build as huge of a pile of money in the future that could never be taxed again, ever? I asked people that. Did, did I use an illustration? Did I use an illustration? I did not. Did I talk about life insurance? I did not. Did I talk about an annuity? Did I talk about mutual funds? I talked about an idea. Do you understand? I don't sell people products. I talk to them about ideas. That's what I want to make sure that I'm getting across to all of you. I call it common sense presenta presentations. I want to have common sense conversations with everybody. I'll give you another example. We don't get anywhere by telling people they're wrong. Every time somebody says these two words, Dave Ramsey, I make a sale. And I want you to understand, I'm not put off by it. They say, you know, we, we like Dave Ramsey. And I say, yeah, isn't he amazing? Think of all the wonderful stuff that he's done for people, taught them about credit and getting out of debt and all of these amazing things. And in fact, he's become so big now, he's got a national audience. And because of that, he has a national audience. Doesn't he have to speak in more generality? Doesn't he have to talk in general because he's dealing with all these people? And so let me ask you something. What if the information that he's telling you on the radio isn't appropriate for your particular situation? Jeez, if he was here, wouldn't he tell you to make sure that you did what was appropriate for your situation? Could I show you a couple of things that might more be more appropriate for what you do? I make a sale every time. They can't believe it. And I tell them it's because Dave Ramsey likes me. Just laugh. I'm just trying to make you laugh. Other thing yesterday, and really want to review this again. I did it for multi-line agents. Now I'm going to do it for everybody. Watch this. If you're a multi-line agent, the minute you get back from this meeting, 
you should take a look at everybody in your book and you should call them up and say, we saw this guy Van Miller at this meeting and he either scared me or he inspired me or he made me think, oh my gosh, I, I haven't shared enough information with the people that I need to share. with." You pick how you want to approach it. But then you say to them, and the, 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 while I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, gosh, there's all these people that I have to call and the, I immediately thought of you. And the reason I'm calling is because I'm very worried that I haven't done a good enough job of making clear that, first of all, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's about to happen, and I want to make sure you're aware of it. Number two, I wanted you to also know that there's a possibility you could be kept safe from all of it, and f the most important thing of all, the thing that was so exciting about the talk, is that he said that there was actually a way that you could take advantage of everything that's about to happen. Wouldn't, and so the only way we know how to say thank you to you, the only way we know how to show you how much we appreciate how loyal and wonderful you've been to us is if we come and spend a few minutes and all we're going to do is ask you these questions to make sure that you're aware. Would that be okay? And I'm telling you, you can get back in front of every single one of those. How many sell Medicare supplements? I sell two or 300 Medicare supplements a year. Okay? This is really important. When you sell a Medicare supplement, you cannot talk about financial while you're doing that Medicare supplement sale. But the minute I'm done with the sale, I say to them, gosh, I don't know how to thank you enough for putting your loyal and loyalty to me for taking care of your health insurance and so forth. And the only way we know how to say thank you to you is if we could make an appointment with you for a week, for 10 days from now, maybe we could get back together because we're very worried about a lot of events that are about to happen in our country and our world. And, and we'd want to make sure that you were in a position to first of all, understand what's happening. Second of all, know that you could actually be kept safe. And gosh, what if you could take advantage of all this mishmash that's going on in our world right now? Wouldn't it be amazing? And it's the only way we know how to tell you how much we appreciate you and how much we appreciate that you put your trust in us to take care of your health care. Again, I say thank you a lot, a lot to my customers. And it's the same with all of you who sell life insurance and annuities. Even if you just sold somebody a month ago, I'm telling you, we, we teach it all the time. You can go back and you say, saw this guy Van Miller. And you can get away with it because if you Google me, there's like six pages of it and speeches and all kinds of stuff. Okay? And they'll, so they'll know you're not lying to them. We saw this guy, Van Miller, and man, he just, it just, it was amazing. He scared the heck out of me. He talked about all this stuff that's about to happen in our country. Higher taxes, and lower benefits, and inflation, and volatility, and and longevity, that people are going to live longer, they're going to outlive their money, and all of these kinds of things, and you make it be a deal, and then you say, and gosh, I was wondering, did I really cover all those bases with you? Would it be okay if I came back? And all I want to do is ask you a series of questions to make sure that, first of all, did you, do you know all these things are going to happen? Second of all, are we sure that we can keep you safe from them? And last but not least, gosh, what if we could take advantage of all the stuff that's about to happen? Wouldn't that be spectacular information? And so everybody struggles in our business because they don't have enough appointments. How, how many people less than five years in the business and you raise your hands for me? Okay? The secret of success here is appointments. I don't want you to study. I want you to practice getting appointments. The two words of the day were practice and questions. And if you learn how to get enough appointments, you will survive in our business. Because I know agents that study like crazy for three, four, five, six months, and by the time they know how to sell life insurance, listen to me very carefully, two things happen. The first thing that happens is the companies change the policies, and then you got to relearn it. You're laughing, but I'm telling you the truth. And the second thing is you're probably out of the business because you don't have any appointments. The key to success in our business is three words, see the people. I, I aspire to the Dan Sullivan training. I have an office in an agency. I don't, I bet you there's 100 agents in our agency. I bet you I don't even know the names of five of them. I pull up at 7.30 in the morning, roll down my windows, my assistants come out, I hand them all the apps, and I drive away. 
I gave my office to my assistants. I don't have an office. I'm out selling insurance and financial products. I'm in front of people. That's what I'm hoping that you'll get from this talk. So does everybody understand what I just said? If you're a multi-line agent, can you go back and get in front of a whole bunch of people? Yes or no? Second, if you sell Medicare supplements or individual health insurance or group insurance or whatever, can you go back and say, hey, I just learned a bunch of stuff and I want to make sure because we're so grateful for your, your trust in us. Can I talk to you? A couple of other things, and then I'll get to this. Remember yesterday I talked about it, and I think I talked about it too fast. If interest rates stay low, and there are many people that believe that this is the new normal. If they stay low, long-term interest rates, 10, 30-year bonds, in the twos. If the stock market does what it did from the year 2000 through the year 2010, what did it make? I give speeches all the time. I said the Dow was 10,000 in 2000. The Dow was 10,000 in 2010. Go check it out. It was. And I'm telling you now, I believe the Dow will be 10,000 in 2020. What would it be like to go a whole generation and not make anything? And what will happen to all these illustrations? I don't care. Whole life, IUL, variable life, just universal life. Everybody comes up to me after these talks all the time and they say, Van, what's your favorite life insurance? Do you like whole life? Do you like index universal life? Do you like universal life? Do you like variable? Ready? Yes. Doesn't matter. We're all working with the same bucks, the same interest rates. It's just what do you feel most comfortable and proud to share with people and how do you make it work? So please understand the government is not on your side right now. Wall Street's not on your side. They're not helping your illustrations do what you previously illustrated. So you don't take the beating. Please go back and develop your partnership with all the people you've sold and all the people you will sell and tell them, look, if it doesn't do internally what it'll do, the flexibility of these products is such that we can use the internal buildup of the cash value to externally take advantage of opportunities that will allow us to achieve the goals we set out to achieve. Doesn't that sound positive and wonderful? If you leave it to its own accord, there could be real issues. Don't leave it to its own accord. Be proactive. Make sure your customers know that there's going to be some difficulty dealing with what was initially illustrated, but that's okay. We're going to work together to make it work. Make sense? Common sense? Last, I want to get to this idea because it puts you a year ahead of the rest of the industry. The industry is not talking about this. We are just seeing companies now getting what are called critical illness riders, long-term care riders. It's called hybrid insurance. I would be willing to bet that five years from now there won't be an insurance company in America selling individual long-term care. They've never been able to figure out how to price it. I'm not picking on them. The government never figured out how to do Medicare. When Medicare was designed in 65, the life expectancy of an American was age 70. They didn't think they were going to have to provide Medicare for 10, 20, 30, even 40 years. And for me, they're going to have to provide it for 60 years. <laughs> do you understand? They didn't know. It's not all their fault. It has to be also the responsibility that we're living longer than anybody ever planned for. It's because it's wonderful to be alive. So we're going to have a situation, we have 140 million people turning 65 over the next 25 years, and we won't have the nursing home facilities. We won't have these programs which are designed to reimburse professional care that are designed to pay either in homes, 
for home care that's provided with professionals or in nursing homes, assisted care facilities, and so forth, if it's the care is given by a family member who is a non-professional, that is disruptive to their lives. And we're seeing it more and more. I, I wanted to give you an example, and I went so fast yesterday that I didn't give. I have a case that I just did about three or four months ago where the, the daughter had to leave work. She couldn't stay working anymore because she had to take care of her mom. Now, her mom was not so bad off that she was like sick, sick, but they were starting to get worried about her. Do you know what I mean? She just, they were worried if she would fall. They wanted to make sure that somebody was there to help her do her grocery shopping, stuff like that. And she had two brothers, and I met with them. It was Thanksgiving of last year. They, they brothers came in for the holidays. And the sons were very clear to the mom and to the sister. We don't care how much our sister does to take care of mom. We still want our third of your 300,000 estate. I see this all the time. All the time. And so the mom was crying and everybody, and I said, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the information. You don't insert yourself in it. I let everybody get all taken care of. The boys went back home, and then I took the daughter and the mom aside, and I said, hey, what if you gave me the 300000 and in your mom's health, I have a company that will take your mom, and she will, they will provide her with $440,000 of face amount. And here's what will happen. You'll take care of mom, and when mom finally passes, you will get your one third of the 300,000 plus the additional 140,000 to reimburse you for what you did to take care of mom and the boys will still get their 100,000. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that we're problem solvers. These are all real issues that we're gonna have to deal with. Money is a very interesting thing in families. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I had a brother and sister and my mom, I took care of and made sure, back when there was a thing, I don't know if you guys remember, they used to have uh, single premium life insurance that you could first in, first out. It was not taxable. You could take all the money out of it, not taxable before they changed the law. And my mom said, Van, you're doing so well, I'm gonna take you out of the will. I'm not gonna leave you any money. Please listen to me, I was hurt for years. It changed my relationship with my mother. Just because I did what I was supposed to do, now I was being excluded. If you don't think families go through this, they do. And it's really important that you sit down and you have real conversations, not pitches about policies. How can we figure out how to make everybody stay okay, stay happy? I, I wanted her and her brothers to still be okay. And there was just no way that was going to happen. So, please get this. If you understand what I just shared with you, you are now a year ahead of the rest of the industry. Use things like single premium life insurance. Transfer money from money market savings accounts, CDs, short-term bond funds, and checking accounts into cash value life insurance policies. Use the leverage to pay back the person that's giving the care that's a non-professional. And then at death, the death benefit reimburses the money that was used to take care of the non-professional caregiver. And there's still an equal division of the estate amongst the beneficiary. I'm telling you, when you tell people you can do that, they will adore you. Okay, I gotta go fast. It, it, see, this goes so fast. It, this clock says I only have two hours and 37 minutes left. <laughs> I'm gonna read this really fast because I can't leave this meeting without reading this to you. Life insurance, world's safest industry. 
There is an account that yields five to six times more than long-term CDs, has guaranteed returns, does not have to be reported to the Internal Revenue Service, can be accessed at any time without penalty, and lets you retire 100% income tax-free. Almost no one knows how wonderful these plans are because the government places tight restrictions on the advertising of these accounts even though they are 100% legal. Why are they secret and who uses these accounts? President Kennedy had enormous amounts of cash value life insurance. M most of the other presidents have enormous amounts of cash value life insurance. Franklin Roosevelt had 562,000 of cash value, a significant portion of his wealth equal to $7 million in today's dollars in cash value life insurance. Joe Biden. I don't own a single stock or bond. I have no savings account. I have all my money in cash value life insurance. Hillary Clinton has at least $100,000 in her own cash value life insurance. And as soon as we see the rest of the Panama Papers, we'll know the rest. In 2014, Johnson & Johnson executives put $23 million in cash value life insurance. Walter Chrysler and Pierre DuPont had $274 million in cash value life insurance. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett over the last five years have put $1.5 billion into a cash value life insurance policy for their foundation. Think about that. They're leveraging their money so that they can give more to the foundation. Bankers, Wall Streeters, Fortune 1000 executives use these accounts extensively. In fact, 51% of the money in equity managers own zero stake in the funds they manage, yet most own enormous amounts of cash value life insurance. Ben Franklin left two $4,400 gifts, one for Boston, one for Philadelphia. The two cities have now collected over $8 million thanks to that 8800 gift 900 times more than the gift. Life insurance is easily accessible and it is liquid. 4,000 banks now have more than $170 billion of cash value in life insurance. Bank of America has more money in cash value life insurance, $18.5 billion, than all of its value of its 5,600 branches and the second tallest building in Manhattan that are valued at $10.9 billion. Citibank is $4.5 billion. J.P. Morgan Chase, $9.8 billion. Wells Fargo, $19.3 billion. PNC Financial, $5.9 billion. According to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, largest 38 banks in America have all invested over $140 billion in permanent cash value life insurance. Now, you know what I stop and ask my customer when I read them that? I say, can I ask you a dumb question? How much do the banks have invested in their own CDs? <laughs> That's called a juxtaposition. They have nothing in their own CDs. They tell you to put your money in their CDs, but they buy cash value life insurance. That's how you share the information in the form of a question. You're not telling anybody anything. You're asking them, do they understand the reality of this? Wall Street Journal says, this account has become a tax shelter for the rich. It gives the affluent tax advantages far beyond those available to middle income people through a 401k or an IRA. I have a lot of middle income and poor people, and you know what I say to them? I say, you know that exact quote? Can I ask you something? Wouldn't it be smart on your part if you did what all the rich people are doing and took advantage of the same things they're taking advantage of? So I just twist it a little bit and turn it so that it's beneficial for them to understand how to use these fantastic products. Please listen to me. I say it unabashedly. Everybody says, well, you really love life insurance. This is the greatest time ever to sell cash value life insurance. For the first time ever in the history of the business, you are the competition. No one can touch you. You're not, it's not even close. With everything that's about to happen, these companies are going to be spectacular. The government places tight restrictions and controls on the advertising of these accounts because once your money is in them, they can't make a dime off of them. Who uses these accounts? Walt Disney. We're in Disney. Started Disneyland using the cash value of his life insurance. J.C. Penney, who I'm distantly related to, very distantly, um, 
He borrowed $3 million of cash value out of his life insurance policy in 1929. And he turned the J.C. Penney Company into a $3.6 billion company. Why? Think about this. What is the only time a bank will lend you money? When you don't really need it. And the time that you need access to money, ask, you know, you want a really good small business question? Go to small business and say, can I ask you something? If we have another downturn, what's the first thing that turns up? It's access to credit. And aren't the businesses that have access to credit during the downturn the ones that roar out of the downturn because they have the money to buy all the companies that didn't have access to credit? Let me ask you something. Do you want to be controlled in the future, or would you like to have control of whatever happens? It's an easy I do it. My dry cleaner has, has their stuff with me, and I'm standing there collecting my dry cleaner. That's what I asked him. My chef. I don't have a personal chef, but a guy that's he's a friend who's a chef. Do you understand? You ask them. They have businesses. What do they need at these terrible times? And are we going to have more of these? Of course we are. Ray Kroc started McDonald's, the Rothschild family, Doris Christopher, the Rockefellers, John Belushi, Andy Warhol, Will Rogers, even Al Capone. Al Capone had cash value life insurance. Can you imagine? Now, one more thing about this, because I want you to believe and understand. I want you to walk out of here just screaming cash value life insurance. This is the American Council of Life Insurers. This is Section 2, Assets. Section 3, Liabilities. I circled it. The insurance industry right now could pay every claim in America and still have a $441 billion surplus. Can the bank say that? We're going to have to bail out every bank in America when this next downturn hits. Please get that. They're leveraged beyond understanding. If you're a member of NAFA, you should be subscribing to Real Wealth Marketing. They'll be part of the thing that I'm going to be talking at on Friday. I have made so much money off of what I'm about to read you. David Walker, former Controller General of the United States, the Chief Accountant of the United States, on Power Session Live, August 12, 2016. You can get the recording. If you're a NAFA member, listen to what he said. I converted all my assets to annuities because I wanted to guarantee my retirement. The chief accountant of the United States, Ben Bernanke, the head of the Federal Reserve, the head of all the banks, he hasn't even been in control of the Federal Reserve for 10 years, has 80% of his money in annuities inside of insurance companies, half fixed and half variable. Shouldn't our customers know that most of the people that are directing us to do something else are talking out of both sides of their face? Yes or no? So, quick sales ideas. I'm going to try and give you three quick ones here. You must write this name down, Google it. Milliman, M-I-L-L-I-M-A-N. Milliman Medical Index. They are an actuarial firm, a healthcare actuarial firm. Does everybody know what an actuary is? An actuary is an accountant with no personality. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. You know the only honest people left in the world? An actuary. Because they're about the math. The math is the math is the math. Now, who has most of the wealth in our country? 70% of the wealth in our country is owned by or controlled by this age group, people over the age of 65. 70% of the wealth. And it's hard to get them to let go of their money because let me ask you something. If there's any grandmas or grandpas in here, what do you think of your children and your grandchildren's appreciation of money? You know, they're, they don't have respect for money. They're in debt up to their eyeballs. They're afraid if they give them the annual gift, they'll go buy a TV set for the bathroom. No, you're laughing, but that's the... So our job, think about it, 
is to inspire grandma and grandpa to take action. And the way to do that is by showing them that the money that they're preserving, see, I have three rules for grandma and grandpa. What if we could show you how to preserve, safely grow, and yes, even leverage your money so that you could stay in complete control until you were done using it, but that you could do all these wonderful things for your family instead of the Internal Revenue Service. And you'll notice, you have not heard me say IRS or Uncle Sam one time. He's not a member of my freaking family. And I want it to hurt. The Internal Revenue Service. The government is coming to get your money. Make it hurt. IRS is a shortcut. No shortcut. You want pain. People react to pain. So what I show them is that Milliman Medical Index, and you can get this information, it's very easy. In the year 2015, the annual cost of health care for a family of four was $24,671 a year. In 2016, it went up to 25826 In 2017, it went up to 26944 In 2018, it went to 28166 and the new one, I believe, just came out and went up to almost 29000 But here's the punchline, you guys. And the health care costs have tripled in the last 15 years. And if they triple again from 28000 by the year 2035, everybody please listen to me, they will be 84000 bucks a year to have access to quality health care for a family of four. And I know that sounds like a big number, but do the math. Would you like to see the math? Anybody interested in the math? See how that transition works? Do you know what the inflation rate on is to get from the current 28 to 84? It's 6%. Is 6% a high inflation rate for health care costs, you guys? It is not. It's a reasonable low interest rate. It's a reasonable low interest rate. So I say to Grandma and Grandpa, please, I'm really good. I, you're going to laugh the way I'm, I'm trying to get a laugh out of you right now. But I kill every Grandma and Grandpa I come across. Man, I throw them under a truck, or I have a tree hit them, or I say there's going to be... I kill these people. I want you to feel death. No, come on, I'm teasing you. I do it nice. You guys ready? Everybody look at me. This is how I kill Grandma and Grandpa. Pretend you're up in heaven. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And you're looking down, and your granddaughter gets sick. And if she has access to quality health care, she gets better. If she doesn't have access to that quality health care, her illness becomes chronic, or she could even die. Remember question number 30 yesterday? Question number 30. I don't see anybody writing. Question number 30. If I could show you a way, Grandma and Grandpa, to stay in complete control of your money till you took your last breath, but instead of giving that money to the government, to a nursing home, or to a hospital, if you could keep that money in your family so your kids could have access to quality health care or even maybe have a fighting chance to have some retirement benefits, wouldn't that be worth looking into? What do you think they say to me? Of course. Every time. Every time. That's what I want you to get. This is a sales idea to get people to want to have a conversation with you about something meaningful. That's another thing. It's really hard for agents to understand. I don't schmooze. I don't talk about gardens. I don't talk about what your favorite color is. I don't give a damn. The way you build a relationship with somebody is you have a serious conversation with them about something that matters. They don't do that with a lot of people. It sets you apart from everybody. From everybody. The people that schmooze are my two assistants. They talk about rhubarb pies and all of that stuff and how to you know, make cookies and all of that crap. I don't do that. My job is to inspire people to take action. Now, please listen to me. Do these people become my friends? I, I had this happen just a week ago. Customer called me up. 
said, I'm Ben, I want you to come to the hospital. To the hospital, what's the matter? Well, it's, I'm finally going to be at the end. I said, I'll be there. I get there. He's got 15 members of his family around the bed. And he says, you guys, you guys, move it. This is Van Miller. This is my insurance guy. This is who you talk to when I'm gone. Don't you see? That's what we do. That's, I'm part of their lives. I'm getting the chills just thinking about this. It's what I dreamed for, to matter. I wanted to matter. I know you're not going to believe this. I've signed 30 contracts in a row with New England. Then New England became MetLife. Then MetLife became Mass Mutual. I've never read one. I don't even know what the commissions are. I don't care. I was taught that if I take care of people, I'll be okay. And it took me a long time to learn, as, I, as you heard before. It took me quite a long time to learn. But I did learn. It was a learned skill. It's a great sales idea. Give people a reason to take action. Here's another one. We've been talking about taxes. Again, please, you guys, go and Google this. I'm telling you, this will make you so many sales. Just Google wage statistics for 2016 and find out it'll say that, and then it'll say ssa.gov. And look at they give you information from the Social Security Administration and the Office of the Chief Actuary. And they tell you how much money everybody makes. And so if you're talking to anybody that has any money, please understand you're seeing it. They're talking about it in the debates. There's going to be a discussion about a huge transfer of wealth from those that have to those that don't. And forgive me, but the people that don't have have the votes. And you have the ability to do planning that will allow them to make that contribution, but still use the power of leverage, the power of pennies that buy dollars, the power of one dollar that does the work of many dollars. What if I could show you a dollar that would take care of you if you live too long? What if I could show you a dollar that would take care of your family, your business, or your charity if you died too soon? What if I could show you a dollar that was self-completing if you became permanently disabled? What if I could show you a dollar that if you had a critical illness like a heart attack, stroke, or cancer, you could access some of the money while you were alive so that you could maybe either offset the problem that would create or you could even train yourself in a new job so you wouldn't have to go back to the stress-filled job that would created your situation? What if I had a dollar that you could access if you were terminally ill before you died? Because isn't the problem most times that the person who manages all the money is the one who dies first. So what if they could access the money before they died and set it up so their family or their business was going to be okay because we provide a terminal illness benefit? And I'm telling you, you listen to me, the number one benefit of a cash value life insurance policy for the next 25 years will be to provide long-term care benefits. It's going to be the biggest deal you could ever understand. You should be excited. Everybody should be peeing their pants right now. It's that exciting. You have the ability to serve the American people in a way that they don't even realize is about to happen, and you can do it with the finest financial institutions on the planet. It's really, really exciting. So you heard about David McKnight and the power of zero. I try to teach agents all the time. You must go to irs.gov. You must print out the 1040 instructions. You must. You have to. If you're going to sell tax-deferred and tax-free benefits, geez, don't you think you should know a teeny little bit about income tax? Now, I'm not telling you to become accountants or anything. I'm not telling you to give tax advice. What I'm asking you to do is do you understand maybe it would be smart if you could determine on page 33 of the instructions how much of their Social Security would be taxed if you did certain things. 
And then what you do is you go to your accountant and you say, please, will you help us verify this information? Accountants like to be included in. And when you include them in, they will not push you away. It's when you're a jerk face and you try to go around them that they will kick your butt. Another important page, page 30, uh, excuse me, the back side of the, what used to be this year's 1040, they're going to change it again. Uh, but it shows you that the standard deduction for people under age 65 is currently 24000 if you're married and filing a joint income tax return. 24000 before you have to pay a penny of tax. Then, on page 35, very important page, because if you're talking to people over the age of 65, it says that the standard deduction for a couple married and filing a joint tax return will be 27000 in the year 2019. So you can make 27000 bucks before you have to pay one cent of income tax. 27000 And then, next page that I show people in that is page 112. And page 112 shows where the income comes from and where it gets sent to. And this is from the Internal Revenue Service. This isn't me making it up. It's not coming from an insurance company. It's not coming from a mutual fund company. It's coming from the Internal Revenue Service. And finally, if you sell insurance and you don't know about page 113 of the instructions, you must understand tax brackets because there are two important numbers that you must pay attention to. The first one is the marginal tax rate, the tax that you pay on the last dollar of income that you earn, and the more important one, the effective tax rate. If you understand how to use those two, then you can show people how to move a tremendous amount of money, not only under current tax law, but January 1st, 2026, when the law goes back to what it was, and it will, they don't even have to vote. It just automatically goes. It's called the sunset provision. Because tax law is progressive, the lower end of the tax brackets is never going to change that much. So you will be able to use it to move around enormous amounts of money that were currently formerly taxable, and well, now you can turn them into income tax free money. So that brings me to the sales idea. I get a call from a guy, 70 years old. He's living in an 800 square foot house across the street from State Fair Park in West Allis, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Milwaukee. He's screaming at me on the phone. He's 70 years old. He got a letter in the mail. He's got 30,000 a year of social security that he and his wife live on, and he's got 300,000 in an IRA and he just received a letter from his company and he's screaming at me that he has to take a required minimum uh, required minimum distribution. I, you saw, I just had a stroke right in front of you. <laughs> he's screaming at me. I said, okay, I'll be right over. I canceled two other appointments, went right to him because he was hot. I walk in his kitchen. He's got an 800 square foot house. I have a closet that's 800 square feet. He has an 800 square foot house. I walk in the kitchen and I go, before I sit down, I got to ask you a question. Come on, tell me, is there somebody that you and the wife are so madly in love with at the Internal Revenue Service that you've decided that you want to leave them a whole bunch of your money? And he goes, what the hell are you talking about? I said, can I sit down now and I'll explain it? He said, yeah, because what am I trying to do? I want to keep him emotional. So I said, you know what we have to do? We have to determine, we have to determine if this is harmful to you. He said, well, why are they making me do this? He's still yelling at me. I'm sitting there across from him. He's yelling at me. I said, well, let's see if it makes your Social Security taxable. That's why you got to know page 33. I can do it in my head. Okay? He's got 30. Where, and by the way, let's stop for a second. Where did I get the 30,000? Please, he had around that number. But do you know that the average Social Security for a couple in America right now is 30,000 bucks a year? You should know that. It helps you to make recommendations. So here's how you figure it. 
you take half of the Social Security, which is 15, you add it, he had to take a required minimum distribution of 11,000. Where do we get the 11,000 from? 300,000 divided by 27.4 is around 11,000. So I said, okay, you gotta take out 11,000. If we take half of your Social Security, it's 30, half is 15, and you add the 11,000 to it, that's 26,000, and that's under the 32,000 threshold that causes your Social Security to be taxable. So it's not gonna cause your Social Security to be taxable. Yay! Then I said to him, I said, now we have to determine if it's gonna cause you to pay any tax. He said, yeah, let's do that. I said, here's the deal. Now only 11,000 is fully taxable coming out of your IRA. Is that less than the 27,000 standard deduction? Yes, it is. So you don't have to pay any tax. He said, oh man, that's great. Then why did you come? I said, well, first of all, I wanted to calm you down. And second of all, I said, second of all, I don't think that's the proper recommendation. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, what if I came here and told you that I think you should take 27000 a year out every year for the rest of your life until we get all the money out of that IRA? He said, well, you'd have to explain that to me. And I said, well, it's very easy. Watch, let's do the math together. And I've done it so many times I can do it in my head. Half of the 30000 is fifteen. You add it to the twenty-seven. that's 42000 You subtract out the 32000 leaves ten, and half of ten is five. Because he has now 5,000 of taxable Social Security, he's in the 10% tax bracket, means he pays $500 of tax on the $5,000 of taxable Social Security. I looked at him and said, can I ask you a dumb question? If you could take 27,000 of fully taxable money out of your IRA every year for the rest of your life, and it would only cost you 500 bucks a year, would you do it? Every day. every day, that's what he said. He was screaming at me. I said, I got another surprise for you. See, you do it like this. I got another surprise for you. We're going to take the 27000 a year. We're going to put it in a cash value life insurance policy. And I said, watch this. At the end of 10 years, you will have taken 270000 out of your IRA and put it in this cash value life insurance, and you'll have 270000 in cash value. He looks at me and he goes, man, that's, that sounds great, but sounds like it didn't make any money. I said, yeah, you know you'd think that, but can I ask you a question? See, you never get offended. You'd think that, but can I ask you a question? Didn't we take 270000 of fully taxable money and turn it into 270000 of never, ever taxable money ever again? I said, so let me ask you something. If we took a low number, not not so number, take a low number, 30,000, 30% 30 of 270000 is what? It's 81000 bucks. So if you do this with me for 10 years, it'll cost you $5,000 in taxes. If you wait until you and your wife die, it'll cost your kids probably a minimum of 81,000. Which would you prefer? What do you think he said? Absolutely, I said, but that's not all. That 27,000 a year, that's gonna buy you about 400 and something face amount, I don't care what it was. And watch, watch, here's the close, you guys. You won't believe it. You're actually gonna go, no, I can't do that. I said to him, I said, stop and think about how brilliant you are. You're yelling at me, and I want to show you what a brilliant man you are. He said, watch this. Over the 10 years, you paid 500 bucks a year times 10 years is 5,000 bucks. And the death benefit, the 420, is about 150,000 more than the 270,000 bucks you gave me. You with me? I said, stop and think about how brilliant you are. You figured out how to get 270,000 bucks out of your IRA, and it didn't cost you or your family one cent of income tax out of your own pocket. He said, that's amazing. I said, man, can I ask you another question? Can you imagine how wonderful it would be if everybody in America was as smart as you are and was doing what you're doing? He said, yeah, I got a few people that would love to do that same thing. I asked for a referral. He didn't even realize I was asking for a referral. I said, you know, if that's not all there was, you should do this right now. But that's not all there is. My plan doesn't have to go through probate if it has a named beneficiary. No lawyers involved. All you have to do is walk in the door, prove to me the person's dead, and we'll give you the money in 10 days to two weeks. Second, my policy is incontestable and private. If you decide you want to give more money to one child than the other, 
they won't ever have to know. It's private. We don't go around telling everybody unless one child goes to the other child and says, nah, 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 I got more than you did. They won't know. Third, my policy can be controlled from the grave. I had a guy bought an $800,000 annuity to, from me. He was scared to death that when he died, his son-in-law, not his daughter, his son-in-law was going to buy a Lamborghini. And I told him, I said, don't you know that you can control this money from your grave? And he said, what the hell are you talking about? I said, haven't you ever heard of a direction for settlement? You get to spell out how you want this money paid out. And if you don't want it paid out in a lump sum, we'll have it paid out in a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis for however long you think would be the best for your, your, your uh, daughter. He said, I can do that? He said, what the hell does that cost? I said, well, it doesn't cost anything. He said, come on. I said, no, we get to keep the money. We're, we're not going to charge you anything. He said, I'll take that. He never once asked me for an interest rate. Not once. People buy for their reasons, not ours. You have to ask the questions. Amazing, amazing, amazing. My policy has creditor and predator protection. You know what I say to doctors all the time? I don't care if life insurance is the lousiest investment on the planet. I don't care if it loses money. In a society where everybody's suing everybody else's brains out, don't you think you should own some? And last but not least, my policy has Medicaid versatility. I can convert it from a lump sum asset into an income stream, and if done correctly, I can keep the money in the family under spousal impoverishment laws. Now please, you guys gotta understand. I asked the customer, do you know anything else that can do this? And they go, no, and I say, well, what are you waiting for? That's the close. I pick up, please, I didn't tell you this yesterday, I had my best year I've ever had. I did 45 million of production last year. I did 10 million of single premium life insurance, 300,000 bucks a week. It's a ridiculous number. I did 22 million of annuities. It's just, you know how I sell annuities now? You guys, again, are going to laugh. I say, please, I have a PNC license, and I use the PNC license to prospect. I ex-state car insurance, I ex-state homeowners, and I ex-state when does your CD come due. And most of them come due in their six-month CDs, 80% of them, and they come due in April and October, so you haven't missed this. Lady calls me up. She says, Van, my CD came due. They've lowered me down. They're only going to pay me a quarter of a percent on my six-month CD, quarter of a percent. I say, I'll be right over. I cancel all their appointments. When they call me, I cancel. I go right over. Then I walk in the door, and I say, let me ask you something. Have you ever heard about the rule of 72? And they go, no. I said, well, the rule of 72 says very simply, if you divide the interest rate into 72, it'll tell you approximately how many years it takes your money to double. So if you divide a quarter of a percent into 72, it'll take your money 288 years to double. If you get 3% from me, it'll take your money 24 years to double. So here's the last question. Do you want the money to double in your great, 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 great grandchild's lifetime, or would you like the money to double still in your lifetime? What do you think they say? Yeah. I say press hard, third copy's yours, make the check out. You're laughing, but it's simplification. When they understand what they're buying, they will give you all their money. It's really that simple. Anyway, please, if you go to my newsletter, I'm begging you. Just if you buy the August newsletter, it's $14.95 at vanmiller.com. You all had the list yesterday. We will send you free the December, January, and February newsletters. And they explain how to do the power of zero the way I just described to you, step by step. Biggest sale I ever made is 
item number five. I went to a guy that had seven and a half million dollars in an IRA and I said, what if we could get all your money out of your IRA with an effective tax rate of 19.6%? If we only had to pay 1.4 million to get all your money out of your seven and a half million dollar IRA, would you do it? It's the same exact sale as the little one. Only now, in order to be in that bracket, you have to take out 378000 bucks a year out of his IRA. I said, how much of that do you need to live on? He said, I could easily live on 178000 Then if you look, it tells you the taxes are $73,000 under the current tax law, which leaves $127,000. He bought $127,000 a year life insurance policy. Yeah, I swear to you on my kids, it took 20 minutes. Once they understand what it is they're doing and that they, please, I use this word a lot, they're not giving up control, they're keeping control, they're just taking it out of this pocket and putting it in this pocket. It doesn't feel like they're making an investment even. I don't even call it that. When I ask for the premium, I say, may I ask you something? How much value do you want to build for you, your family, and your business? You can build as much value as you like. See, now they look at it in a different frame. It's not a premium. It's not an investment. It's not how much value would you like to build for you so that you can take advantage of all these amazing, wonderful opportunities. You know, I asked you guys yesterday, do you guys think I like to sell insurance? Do you think I'm having a blast? I'm, I'm hoping that that's what you're taking away. I, I'm just laughing and giggling like crazy. I wanted to show you something. I, I only have time to share one more idea and then I've got to close. But I wanted you to see all the different sales ideas that I have. The Ben Bernanke sales idea, the index annuity reforms idea. Uh, it's really scary. Uh, or times are bad, should I do anything idea. I've got all kinds of ideas, pages and pages. I gave you four or five. That's what the newsletter's about. If I can get you to subscribe to the newsletter, I get to touch you every day, every month, excuse me. And I work my buns off on it. I read 14 newspapers a day. I read 250 periodicals a month and I get 50 Google alerts a day, that's equivalent to 1,000 articles a day, and I build up a pile, it's this big of a pile, 1,000 articles, then I narrow it down to the best 150 articles, and then I watch the only true sport left in America, WWE wrestling. And if, well come on, that's the only true sport left. 500 pound guy hits you in the face, you don't even get a bruise, come on! But if I can understand it while I'm watching wrestling, the article is simple enough to go in the newsletter. It's about simplicity. So, oh, take it back. You, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. <laughs> really, really quick. Let me just show you a real, remember, interest rates are ridiculously low right now, right? This customer's got 200,000 in non-qualified money. Really think about this. If they're getting right now, they'd be lucky to get 2% interest. I'm giving them, that's a high number. 2% of 200,000 is 4,000 a year and is fully taxable. Watch what you can do. This is Tom Hegna. This is so Tom Hegna, it's ridiculous. You take 100,000 and you buy him a straight life annuity with any insurance company in America. Right now, his company right now would pay six or 7,000 a year to a 65 to 70 year old, guaranteed for as long as they live in a zero interest rate environment because they use mortality credits. And all of your companies use mortality credits. So now, instead of getting 4,000, let's just use six. I won't use nothing nutso, 6,000 a year. And not 4,000 is taxable, only 1,000 of the 6,000 is taxable. And then what do you do? You take the other 100,000 and you buy a 200,000 single premium face amount policy. So if they get one check and then they die, the family still gets the 200,000 bucks. 
But watch this. If they live for 30 years at 6000 a year, they get 180000 bucks for their 100000 investment in a zero interest rate environment. And in the meantime, stop and think. Remember the flexibility of the single premium life policy. Every time the stock market crashes, can you access the cash value? You bet your life. Can you take advantage of opportunities to maybe build back that other 100000 over those years? You bet your life. You give them so much control and so much flexibility. And you know, if that's all there was, you should do this right now. But that's not all there is, because my plan doesn't have to go through probate. My plan is incontestable and private. My plan can be controlled from the grave. My plan has creditor and predator protection. And my plan has Medicaid versatility. It can be converted from a lump sum asset into an income stream. There's so many of these ideas, ridiculous. Everybody you go across, this is our time. There's never been a time like this. I'm going to sell insurance for another 60 years. I love it. I hope you do too. have to close right now. I have to close. Two things. We'll be out of here in three minutes. Thank you for staying. I'm, a, I'm a over my time right now, so thank you. One of my favorite groups of all time is a group called the Beatles. And one of the guys that was called the fifth Beatle was a guy named George Martin. He created a show in Las Vegas at the Mirage called Love. I've seen that show 15 times. That uh, You don't want to sit next to me. I cry like a baby no matter where I'm sitting in the thing. It's gorgeous. I tried to hire George Martin to speak on the main platform of the Million Dollar Roundtable uh, because he has a relative who's in our business. And George Martin says this about all of you, the fifth Beatle. Listen to what he says about you. He says, like love, do we care if somebody's nose is a bit crooked or their face a bit wrinkled? He said, no, the power to move people to laughter, to tears, to violence, the ability to inspire people to take action is the most powerful attribute any human being can have. And that's what you guys do for a living. You change the world Yes, one appointment at a time, and don't ever lose sight of that. You matter right now. You're a big deal. You have to know that. When I deliver my policies, this is it. I'm going to read this poem to you. I don't know it by heart. But when I deliver my policies, this is what I deliver, and then we're finished. I am a piece of paper, but even more, I am an idea. I am a promise. I help people see visions, dream dreams, and achieve economic immortality. I am an education for the children. I am savings. I am also property that increases in value from year to year. I lend money when you need it most with no questions asked. I pay off mortgages so the family can remain together in their own home. I assure fathers and mothers the daring to live and the moral right to die. I create, I manage, and distribute property. I guarantee the continuity of business. I protect the jobs of employees. I conserve the employer's investment. I am a tangible piece of evidence that a man or a woman is a good spouse and parent. I'm a declaration of financial independence, a charter of economic freedom. I am the difference between an old man and an elderly gentleman. I'm the only thing that a father or mother can buy on the installment plan and the survivor doesn't have to finish paying for. I am a certificate of character, an evidence of good citizenship, an unimpeachable title to the right of self-government. I am protected by laws that cre prevent creditors from accessing the money I give to loved ones. I bring dignity, peace of mind, and security to the latter years of life. Listen to this. I am the great social compact that merges the individual into the mass and places behind the frailty of human beings standing alone the immeasurable strength of human beings standing together. I supply investment capital that makes the smoke go up the chimneys, the wheels turn and the motors hum. I guarantee there will always be Christmas with tinsel, a happy fireside and the laughter of children even though a breadwinner parent is no longer there. I am the guardian angel of this home and this business. I'm your life insurance policy. I used to hate being in a room with you people. I hated it. You were successful and I was a failure. You were nice and I was ugly. 
you were filled with love and I was filled with hate. And you gradually won me over. You took care of me. It's like Steve when he talks about being a member of NAFA. That's why I'm a member of NAFA, because you did rub off on me. I can't tell you how grateful I am, how much I owe all of you. I'm so proud to be in a room full of insurance and financial professionals. Florida, you have, if not the best association in the country, I have to give you a if, because I'm from Wisconsin and we think we're pretty good too. You're in the top two or three. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you. I really appreciate the time.